Well hello and welcome to this Record Power Live Sessions Highlights video. To see more Live Sessions videos, you can subscribe to the Record Power YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the bell so you get notifications each time a new video is released. Hi, my name's Theo and welcome to my studio workshop here in Brisbane, Australia. going to have some fun today and uh, today I'm going to share with you you take something like a gnarly old fence post put it in the lathe and you turn it into a thing of beauty talk about gnarly this is just a beautiful bit of cypress pine and have a look at the grain on that have a look at the grain on that look at that swirl through here amazing how you can do so what I call this demo is it's a collaboration with nature because what you're doing is nature created the tree humans came and chopped it down and turned it into a fence post and then what happened nature came back at it with the rain and the wind and the sand and the dust and the animals came and rubbed against it and you end up with this beautiful uh, bit of work and then what you can do is put it on the lathe and show the original part of the tree inside and it's usually pretty beautiful there's one more thing that you need to cover off uh, Theo <laughs> um, somebody just pointed out that a lot of fence posts are treated. Back in the day, they used to use creosote. Um, now, uh, some of the CCA, which is copper chrome arsenate, that's the last thing you want. Usually, it's only the part that goes into the ground that is, that is coated with the creosote back in the day. Um, the other thing they used to do was dip them in old uh, motor oil uh, before they put them in. But um, with something like cypress pine, they didn't need anything because the termites, the whole idea of dipping them was to stop the termites eating the, the timber. So the, as Terry would say. Um, so the, the thing is with something like cypress pine, if it's a fence post, that's the last thing the termites eat. They eat everything else except the cypress pine. They don't like it. Uh, a lot of people use the cypress pine for, um, for house frames. I hope that's, uh, that's covered it. But, but thanks to Don Prorak for, for pointing that out about those chemical concerns. Uh, if you've got a concern, you're better off not doing it. But because what I'm gonna be doing is, this one doesn't have a hole. The other ones have got a hole in the convenience place, but I'm gonna show you how you can put the hole in so it looks natural as well. So I'm turning something that's a little bit obtuse as well as gnarly. <laughs> Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So this is like degree of difficulty. It's intermediate and, and beyond. If you're starting out, just, just make one out of something square or that's already round is a good start. So, and start a lot smaller than this. So let's have a look at this piece of timber. It's, uh, it's got a beautiful red color. I prefer, um, as with that photo that I showed you, Someone gave me a fence post and said, can you do something with these? The one on the right, it had weathered right down to the hole where the wire had gone through. I kept the actual top absolutely natural. And I think that was a feature of that one. So you can keep that natural aspect of it if you want. That's a better position now. Now I'm going to shape this. I don't want to go any narrower here. And I'm going to work downhill into the centre. For those of you that are wondering, I'm at about 900. The main thing is I don't catch this on the, on the other side here. And yeah, it's, it's turning beautifully on the inside once you get down around. And let's have a look at the overall balance. We can now start to look at the shape that we're forming. Again, with the bowl gouge, you just pick it up here and just roll the gouge and it starts to cut. If you want to make your work nice and steady, so that's my live centre, I'll put it in my Jacob's chuck and I can bring this up. I'll just really should stop the lathe to do this. And that's a little bit of safety. You can just see that going in there and that's going to hold it really nice and steady for the rest of the project. Now I'm getting a little bit of some special marking here and that's because I'm rubbing the bevel too hard. We'll go back to this one and see if I can eliminate that. So that's about as thin as I need to go. We'll bring up the speed a fraction more now that I've got the mount. That rough and gouge will probably just make it easier. 
I just want to get a nice line through here. Yeah, I want that to be slightly increasing as it goes. That's fine. Let's do the rest of it now. I like nice sweeping lines. I'm going to make it like a bottle, more so. I'm just catching the right hand side. The slower you go, the smoother the line, the less you're cutting a record, you're not cutting the record, you're actually just letting the tool work through the wood. And I can move the tool rest a bit closer now. Let's have a look at the shape, overall shape. Um, probably if I zoom out a little bit more so that you can see the shape of the vase, I think that really does help you imagine it. You can see the shape that we're getting that I'm trying to form now. And then you get yourself a nice brush, a decent sized brush, like here's, here's, a, here's a whopper. Uh, but basically, it gives you an idea of what it's going to look like when it's finished. So Theo, Richard's asking, would you sand an uneven shape on the lathe with it turning or hand sand it? Uh, I would sand all this, but use a long strip, a very long strip of sandpaper. But what you'll find is this really nice crisp edge here will be rounded off with the sandpaper and this trailing edge will be nice and sharp so you are better off just sanding with the grain by hand and that way you keep that nice crisp edge because you don't really want to round that off you want that to be nice and sharp because that's where the the contrast line is you can see there the richness of it i'll just leave this side undone uh, so you can see what this side is going to look like like i say it will go lighter when it dries and you can use your brush to get into all the crooks and nannies in there. Now, where was I? I was just about to grab the barbed wire and show you what I do. So virtually you put it in here and bend it. And then if you want, you can go through again or uh, you can make it in two pieces. So if I was to cut that off here, say about there. Wow, this stuff is so hard. It's all part of evolution. I thought it was part of revolution. So there's that side of it. And I'm just going to grab the other pliers and I'll square this around about there and that can go in just like that. So I think I've uh, given you an idea of the concept. So it's just a matter of sanding it and parting it off. So you can see there how that would sit on a, on a table in an old Queenslander or out on the deck. It's pretty solid. The wind's not going to blow it over, but it looks even nicer on that side. Uh, you could put finish on it or you could leave it uh, a la natch. But the, the great thing is that you've got uh, the contrast between the, the gnarly bit here, the beautiful piece here, and the, uh, then you've got the, 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 the sharpness of the, the, the rusty barbed wire and then the beauty of the flowers. And uh, these create what they call, what the artists call uh, eye flutter. And that is that your eyes just keep working over the piece, looking at uh, uh, different aspects of, of, of it. You follow the line say around here and then you follow it up to here you notice the nice curve and then you come down the other side and then you notice the barbed wire and then you go down into the hole as i was saying beauty's in the eye of the beholder and uh it's up to you to turn it into something of beauty i remember turning one of these for a mate of mine and uh he called me a few names he said you've done it for me now theo he says i'm struggling to burn any piece of wood every time i pick it up i say to myself what could theo do with this so that's, uh, that's your homework now. <laughs> Go and find the worst, ugliest piece of wood you can find and see if you can turn it into something that's a work of art. Oh, well, thanks for joining us. And don't forget, if you want to see more live sessions videos, you can subscribe at the Record Power YouTube channel. Come on and join our international woodworking community and be part of the next Record Power live session. You can register at recordpowertv.com.